Hey guys, this is Samir for Digit.in and what we have today is an in-depth review of the Nexus 6P. Yes, this is Google's flagship smartphone made by Huawei. And uh, so we're going to kick things off with the build and design. Now, just to put things into perspective, we have last year's Nexus 6 with us. And you can see both the phones are really big. The Nexus 6 has a 5.9 inch display and uh, the Nexus 6P has a 5.7 inch display. So even if you put uh, both the phones side by side, when it comes to height, they are almost the same. But when it comes to the width, uh, the Nexus 6 last year's flagship is still a little wider. Turn things around and you can see that this time we have the aluminum back. The Nexus logo is still here. Last year we had a slight dent for uh, the Motorola symbol which is now signature with Motorola phones. But here instead we have the Nexus imprint which is the fingerprint sensor. Um, at the top we have uh, the camera which we will get to later on. And as you can see last year's Nexus had the camera with a ring flash. Uh, when it comes to the buttons, the layout is pretty much the same. You have the textured power button and the volume rocker, which is a nice touch. Now, coming back to the phone at hand right now, the Nexus 6P, uh, the display, as I said, is a 5.7-inch uh, QHD display. And as you can see, the display is very crisp, very clean, very nice. It's an AMOLED display, so something that we've seen on Samsung smartphones. It is as good uh, for real-world usage, if not better, than let's say the Galaxy S6. Uh, there are no physical buttons on the front. All you have is a front facing camera and uh, two speakers. Now when you're talking on the loudspeaker, it's only the bottom speaker that works as the loudspeaker. But when you're watching videos or listening to music, it's both the speakers that function. On this side, we have uh, the SIM card slot on the left side. And at the bottom, we have the new USB type C port. Now, uh, when you buy the Nexus 6P in the box, you get two cables. One is, of course, the USB Type-C to USB Type-C at both ends, which plugs into the wall adapter that you get in the box as well. But you also get a standard USB to USB Type-C cable in case you need to plug the phone into your computer or into an old charger that has a USB port. So that's a nice thing that comes in the box. But nonetheless, we have moved on to USB Type-C. And on the top, we have the headphones jack. Now, uh, before we go into more details, uh, when the phone was announced, there was a lot of uh, talk about the bulge for the camera. But now that I'm holding it sideways, you can see that the bulge is ever so slight. It's almost non-existent. It's actually the right amount if you need to put in something extra. Uh, it has, of course, the aluminum body. Now, there are, of course, a lot of stories about the phone bending and the camera housing glass shattering. But in our everyday use, I've been using this phone for about a little over two weeks now and uh, nothing, none of these problems have persisted, but then again, I was really careful with it. So overall, the build of the phone is really, really premium. It's really nice. The only disadvantages is because it's so big, single-handed operation is a little difficult, and I consider myself someone with really relatively big hands, so getting to the top of the screen if you're holding it at the bottom, or getting to the bottom if you're holding it at the top does get slightly cumbersome and difficult. So it's more for two-handed use if uh, you're someone that's going to type a lot and that's what I'm going to show you right now is the keyboard is extremely comfortable to use. So as you can see when the keyboard comes up, this is digit.in. It's very comfortable to type on. I've actually spent a lot of while on this phone actually typing out the articles that we push out. Um, it's perfect for two-handed use in the portrait mode. In landscape mode, the keyboard becomes a little wide. I'm personally not really comfortable with it, but if you're someone who is, then that's great. In, land, um, in portrait mode, it works really well. Uh, so that is to do with the build and design of the phone. Now coming in to the fingerprint sensor. So first of all, it is really fast. Google calls this the Nexus, imp uh, Nexus imprint and it is fluid. Once you set it up and I would recommend that during the setup process when it asks you to touch the fingerprint sensor multiple times, you touch it a little bit on the edge like so completely as well, a little off because when you're going to remove the phone from let's say your pocket or your bag and you want to unlock it, the minute you get the natural grip and your finger touches the fingerprint sensor, you will arrive at the home screen. So right now, if it's locked, all I'm going to do is touch the fingerprint sensor and bam, you're on the home screen. It's fluid. It works fine. Uh, it's a great addition, of course, now that uh, Android Marshmallow has the fingerprint sensor natively built and we are going to see a lot more smartphones, especially budget phones, come with the fingerprint sensor.
Moving on to the everyday performance. Now, since this is running uh, the new Marshmallow operating system, you will notice that the home screen is still the same. You still have Google Now, voice recognition. Everything that you saw on 5.1 Lollipop is here. If you are a Nexus user, then you probably got an update that gave you the vertical scroll rather than the uh, horizontal one that we've seen on previous Nexus devices. And it's great. Now, as you can see on the top here, I have Facebook, WhatsApp, YouTube, and the messaging. So these are the most popular apps that I use for the first half of the day. If uh, this was the second half of the day, you'd probably have Amazon Kindle would have shifted right up here along with the browser because uh, in the later half of the day, I spend time reading books or browsing websites. And this is a very neat touch. So uh, the operating system kind of actually identifies the apps you use most frequently and it lists them on the top and the rest of the apps are listed uh, alphabetically uh, below. That is actually a very neat touch. There's also a search option. You can search for the apps in case you're someone that preloads it with a lot of apps. The drop-down notification is still the same uh, with, of course, the few slight differences. A great thing is now that uh, your settings has a search option. So if you want to search for Bluetooth or anything, you can actually just start typing in your options right there. So you no longer need to actually run through all the settings to find the setting that you're looking for. Another feature of Marshmallow that has been raved a lot, which we had a little bit of trouble with, is the fact that when the phone is in standby, uh, the battery usage is completely no. Now, thankfully, uh, in the morning, you can see right at the tip out here when I charged it to 100%, it was flatlined because the phone was ideal and on the bed. But once you start using it, immediately there is a bit of a drop, as you can see out here. The problem that I faced with the phone was even when it was in its ideal state, there were nights when only 5% of the battery was consumed in standby mode and there were other times when there was actually 25% of the battery consumed and those nights there were of course background activities like apps being downloaded. Uh, but yeah, the fact that it consumes less battery when it is in standby mode is a great addition. You also have of course Android Marshmallow right here. Overall, the operating system works fine. It's smooth, it's fluid. Um, if you're someone that likes stock Android, you will feel right at home out here. The additions are helpful, and uh, if there are certain features that you've never used, I'm pretty sure you're not gonna come across them and use them again. Another feature that Nexus smartphones were usually criticized for is the camera. Now, opening up the interface, you can see it's pretty simple. You have uh, the interface which is similar to an Android 5.1 lollipop. You can go into your settings to change the resolution and quality for both the front and the rear camera. The rear camera also has the ability to shoot video in 4K, which is a great addition in case you want to capture those really, really high resolution videos. Uh, now coming to the picture quality, it is actually quite good. The camera is really snappy at clicking pictures right there. And the little loading time and the processing that you're seeing right here is called HDR+. Now when you keep the flash switched off by default like I have out here, you will see something that HDR+, plus is out here now. It's on auto, it's off, and it's always on. So if you keep it on auto, the camera of course will judge uh, the settings based on how uh, the lighting conditions are and click the picture. You can also have, of course, the flash on auto. So if I click it now, it didn't use the flash because, of course, it wasn't necessary. But you can see a bit of a difference between the HDR Plus and without HDR Plus on the phone. So that is a camera. It's a great improvement when you look at previous Nexus devices. Of course, if you compare them to the likes of, let's say, the iPhone 6S or the iPhone 6S Plus in particular, which has uh, OIS or uh, Samsung's flagships like the Note 5, the Galaxy S6 Edge, uh, Edge Plus, those cameras produce slightly more vibrant, especially the Samsung cameras produce more vibrant images. So if you're someone that likes the colors to pop, that's the way to go. Um, as far as the iPhone 6S Plus's camera is concerned, it produces more true to uh, life, more natural colors. So if you want someone, if you are someone that wants more true to life colors, you can go the iPhone route. But this camera is, of course, a top of the line flagship camera that you want on a smartphone. Um, the housing is great. You have the dual tone flash, uh, like I said at the back. And Overall, the performance of the phone is very good. Now, the only con that I have actually come across when using the phone is, of course, its big size. Uh, I have used a Nexus 5 as my daily driver for most of the time, and before that, the Nexus 4, so I'm someone that appreciates a more compact form factor. So this phone might be a little too big for me that way. But if you're someone that likes big phones, then this phone works for you. My only other con with the phone is, of course, uh, the uh, 
fluctuating battery performance. There are days when I have used it in heavy use and it's last me uh, till the evening where at night it's at about 20% and there are days when it's been idle and I've seen a 40% drop throughout the day when I've done almost nothing on the phone. So the battery performance on this unit was a little inconsistent. But overall, if you are looking for a flagship that can perform, this is definitely at the top of your list. Uh, even if you play heavy games, we've played a bunch of games, we'll uh, show you one right here that's Need for Speed. And the fluidity with which the apps load, even if you see the multitasking menu, let's just pop up the multitasking menu. Right now it might seem uh, like not much because uh, I actually cleared most of the apps in the morning, that's about 10, 12 apps, but there are times when I've had about 30 apps open at a given point in time and all and the phone works absolutely fluidly so there we have it the game's loaded up and we'll give you a glimpse of some of its gameplay uh, while we're talking about the gameplay we can uh, run through the specifications really quickly it's got the snapdragon 810 3 gb of ram this particular model has 32 GB of built-in storage. Uh, you have two variants available in India, 40,000 rupees for the 32 GB variant and 43,000 rupees for the 64 GB variant. Thank God there is no 16 GB variant. So yes, the phone slightly premium uh, up to the Nexus 5, the Nexus smartphone was uh, a great buy for those that wanted a great Android experience at about the 25,000 price point, which was the price at which the Nexus 4 and the Nexus 5 were launched. The 6, uh, 5X and 6P of course have crossed that barrier and uh, yeah, so the game is running and just to show you how it looks and maybe how it sounds, we we'll bump up the volume. So there we have it. Uh, considering its price point, there are a lot of options out there, especially if you're someone that's looking to pick up a flagship model and here we go with the game. So, as you can see, the display is really crisp. I'm just gonna... So, as you can see, the display is very crisp. It's, uh, it has an AMOLED display, so it's as good, if not better, than what we've found on the Galaxy S6, for example. And the gameplay is fluid. We've played a lot of games. This is just one of an example to give you. Uh, there is no lag, there is no stutter in the frame rate. There is no dip in the quality at hand either. Um, so if you're someone that really enjoys gaming on a smartphone, then this can definitely be a great choice. The widescreen makes it great for multimedia consumption as well. Just to give you a glimpse of how videos look, we could play something from YouTube and um, give you a glimpse, let's say Tomb Raider, uh, the Tomb Raider trailer, for example, if that's something that pops up. And you can see that it is a pretty good display. This is probably going to play in about 720p or 1080p, depending the, on the internet this, connection. What is she trying to say? Yeah. And you can see just how rich the display looks. Of course, it's a fingerprint magnet if you are getting that now as well. But if you watch a video in a higher resolution, let's see if you can bump up the resolution to 1080p. The boldest have dared to go further. They risk death, and in doing so, live on forever. What drives these few to the ends of the earth? The display is great for multimedia consumption. If you're someone that likes carrying your library of music and videos with you, it's good. If you're in a small room and looking to get some great audio out of it, the speakers here are great as well. So, uh, should you actually consider purchasing the Huawei Nexus 6P. Well, if you have a budget of about 40,000 rupees and want a flagship smartphone, you have other contenders in this price bracket as well from other manufacturers, uh, from Samsung and many more out there. You have the Xperia Z5, which is about 50,000 rupees. That's 10,000 rupees more. What you are getting in this package is the latest Android operating system, stock Android, a good build, good speakers, a really, really good rear and front facing camera and of course the Nexus imprint, which if you have started using a fingerprint scanner on a smartphone, there is no going back. And its placement is also great at the back. We've seen uh, the Sony Xperia Z5, which has it on the side, the OnePlus 2 and the iPhones, for example, have it on the front. Uh, on the back, it just seems really, really natural to use.
Uh, where does the smartphone suffer? Well, to begin with, uh, this particular model, I'm not sure if that will be in all retail units, has a problem with the inconsistent battery performance and, of course, no expandable storage. So once you have 32 or 64 GB, you are stuck with that. But it's great to see 32 GB as a base model. So there you have it. That is our in-depth review of the Nexus 6P that's made for Google by Huawei.